Oh, Matt, I can hear myself now. Yeah, I'm good. I can hear him. We're good. Good, sweet. Uh, check, 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 check. Yep. Check, check, check. There we go. We're going now? Oh, my. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I dropped the pen somewhere. Can am you I grab going, by your Am foot? I going through program? Because I don't have anything on... Uh, Maybe I'm in the wrong switch. Oh! Internal, external. Channel one and two. Check, check, check. All right, we're good. All right. Oh, yeah, here. I'll do the voiceover. Go ahead. With, uh, with bars and tone? Okay. I'll wait for those to be off. Good afternoon, lacrosse fans, and welcome to the Meridian Center here in the Niagara region. It's the Durham Turf Dogs in town looking to beat the Lock Monsters once again next here on JBI Sports Network. Welcome inside the Meridian Center here in the beautiful Niagara region, home of the Niagara Ice Dogs, the OHL, who were here last night against the North Bay Battalion. But tonight, it's the Durham Turf Dogs in town here on Super Bowl Sunday to take on the Niagara Lock Monsters in their second home game of this early 2016 campaign. Spencer Tangway alongside Matthew Carrick to call today's game, and it's the second time, Matt, these two teams have met. Yeah, the first time it was... Uh, real exciting out at the General Motors Center. Uh, I was out there for that game and it was the last second goal uh, from the outside, a big shot from Durham. They had to come all the way back after a pretty good start from Niagara, uh, led by Connor Danko in net, I believe, that night. He's been phenomenal tonight. We're going to get a look at, I believe, someone else here tonight. Pardon me, it is Danko. But uh, let's check the standings here. Durham sits atop. Their only loss came last week uh, to the Oswegan Demons. Yeah, the Lock Monsters. Unfortunately, at the bottom though, but last time, last time they played in this building against the Southwest Cyclops, what an explosive start for Niagara. 8-2 at the half, and they won that one, a final score of 15-6. So Niagara, they can easily sway a game if they just get their sticks going, and if Danko, who will start tonight, has a really big game in net. Yeah, it really was. They, Niagara's been at the bottom of the standings pretty much ever since they won that championship. One of the guys that hasn't been there who will be back tonight, not our player to watch. We're going to get a look at our players to watch, but Andrew Potter makes his return. Our player to watch, we go with Thomas Hogarth, a fantastic rookie season last year. Uh, good when he gets going on, on offense, good for about four goals a game. 
Uh, but normally a defensive guy, he's definitely one to watch here this afternoon. Well, for the Lock Monsters, it's the guy who really likes to shoot from the outside and will play the top on the power play. And it's Brandon Tainhouse with a season already with 13 points in three games. He's played for five professional teams in the National Lacrosse League. And he's a current member of the Toronto Rock who haven't had the best start, obviously, to their season. But he can really add a lot to this Niagara team. And with his explosive offensive shot, you never know where the ball is going when he has the ball. He was one of the guys brought in to fill that spot on the right side, vacated by Andrew Potter, and or pardon me, the left side, and kind of calm things down. And didn't do much of it last year, definitely on pace. It'll be interesting to see how Potter fits in alongside Tainhouse he's got going. Cole Murray uh, gets, we believe, his first start of the season as it's pretty much been Ryan Masters. We understand work commitments, I believe, for Masters here this afternoon along with Thomas Hogarth, they're going to keep those two big guys out of the lineup. Well, Connor Danko, the native of Fenwick, Ontario, local boy, Connor Danko gets his second straight start, second straight start rather, here at the Meridian Centre. And boy, was he hot last time. Our first star of the game right here at the Meridian Centre last time in their home opener. Super Bowl Sunday, though, a decent crowd on hand to ring in this game here on the JVI Sports Network. We'll step aside. We'll have live coverage of today's game featuring the Durham Turf Dogs and the Niagara Lock Monsters in just a few minutes. One other game happening in Sealax this afternoon on Super Bowl Sunday, live from the Barry Molson Center. It's the Southwest Cyclops taking on the Barry Blizzard. That game's happening on Sealax 2. If you'd like to get the live feed, head on over to Sealax 2, Barry against Southwest. But right here at the Meridian Center, it is the Durham Turf Dogs in town. And Matt, as we mentioned, the Niagara Lock Monsters sit in fifth place, but really shouldn't be there with some of the games they've played. Yeah, it's been a close season for them, and, and they really, when, when, league, when teams in the league are so tight together, it, it's kind of hard to pinpoint where the issue is, whether it's the goaltending allowing the one extra goal. I know you're biased against that theory, or the offense that needs to get the, the one extra goal. But that game in Durham, they, they really started to tire a little bit, I thought, uh, down the stretch in that fourth quarter. And it really, that's when Durham found their legs, which, Obviously, it's a bad mix, and they went on that run and scored in the last second. That place was rocking as well. So, it, and as you said, a pretty good crowd here for Super Bowl Sunday, and they're already loud, led, led by Rod Mahood. So, they should have the uh, home field advantage here, but anything can happen here in Sealax with the teams as close as they are. Well, four men will call today's game. We'll take a look at today's officials. The on floor crew chief is Mr. John Zabo, with John Watson, and Del Set is our technical official. We'll pause and we'll send it down to floor level for the playing of our national anthem.
Well, the anthem is in the books. 60 minutes of lacrosse still to come. Tweet us who you think will be today's three stars of today's game. Tweet us at JVI Video. And Matt, last week it was Connor Danko who was the clear and obvious first star choice. And if he gets hot, he could easily steal it again. Yeah, but as I sit off the top, I'm looking at Andrew Potter, Corey Fowler. Those guys are, you know, 10 point a game threats. So obviously, the Maple Leafs celebrating Daryl Sindler's 10 point game. But watch for those two to be huge. And uh, no Tim Bergen, no Derek Hopcroft, no Mark Greenberg, no Jesse Guerin for Durham. I think the bulk of the offense is going to fall to Dylan Goddard and Jeff McNulty. And you can throw a little John St. John in there if you want as well. So uh, those would be my guys to watch, obviously. Our official players to watch, Thomas Hogarth, Brendan Tainhouse, but it's going to be a tight game, and I expect the offenses to come out. Could be the first half of this first quarter to win the game, whoever's got their legs under them early. Well, last time here at the Meridian Center, it was Nico Baudouin who owned the dot. He's not in today's game, so a new draw man out there for the Niagara Lock Monsters. But before we even get going, Definitely the edge in goaltending to the Lock Monsters with Danko, the veteran in net. Going against Cole Murray, we underway here at the Meridian Center. Niger wins the opening possession on the far side. Yeah, they Tim Edwards taking it off the dot. He's been a very impressive rookie coming in this season so far for Niagara. Well, a couple of players on Niagara this year that are not in the lineup called up to the NLL. Craig England just on the Bandits practice roster. He's been activated to their player roster. As of last night, I believe. And how about Jordan Robertson off the Toronto Rock practice roster, former Durham Turf Dog. Niagara controls possession up top. With possession, here is Robertson. Robertson down low to Coyle, who wears 67 purple. Niagara in their purple and white uniforms. Durham in the green with gray. Gorgeous unis for, for Niagara. They are actually quite, you can't miss them. That's the best way to put them. Very nice uniforms, probably best in the league. Got my vote. Durham back the other way, getting a change out of the front door. And they'll settle it down. Not sure where the ball is as everyone just takes a pause. I'm still not certain where the ball is. I believe it was in the stick did of the... It, did it bounce in the Niagara bench? It's somewhere. Mark Farthing just batted it towards his own bench. <laughs> so a little trickery to start today's game at the Meridian Center. Hidden ball trick that actually fooled everyone in the building. Here's Slade, 22. Slade to the far side, slides up top. Good seal coming, but no one open. They go down low to the corner. Cuts the middle, Slade the shot. Murray makes his first good save. Beautiful cut right through the middle there. And I think it was Riley Campbell caught flat-footed, missed Slade coming straight down the pipe. Well, Campbell got it up. He went through Mike Triolo, and they go to the far side. Good seal, opens up up top, cross crease. Campbell couldn't put it home. Oh. And right away, Danko called to make the splits. Looked a little awkward getting up, too. We'll see what happens back down the floor the other way, but 2-1-1 on one here already. We're still scoreless here. one nothing is our score in Barry, as we were just told. That game, of course, on Sealax 2. Sealax 1 here. Spencer Tangway alongside Matt Carrick. There's a good scoring chance, but Murray once again makes the save. Yeah, Chris Buswell, the late addition, throwing his size around there as well. And... Him and Brooker Muir off that opening faceoff, they were starting to mix it up on the restraining line as they, uh, they don't forget what happened out in Durham and want to make sure that they get the early impression here. Up top, Buswell couldn't connect. Still trying to find that loose ball. It's behind him. Got to watch the over and back. Gets sent to the boards, and now it's in possession of the Durham Turf Dogs, number 14, Ryan McCrory. Ball's up top. Durham getting a change, getting a... Good offensive look here. Five turf dogs now on the floor. They come to the near side. Looks on an outside shot. Danko goes down in the butterfly and makes the bounce shot save. He looks to be all right going down, making that save. Got up pretty good. He did have a nice little stretch as uh, Niagara went back the other way, though, a couple minutes ago. Danko, outlet pass to the near side. They cross half. Newfeld goes to the bench. Two Whoa. on two, they come. Coil the shot well high. Off the back glass, and it's easily picked up by Wasson. A lot of key notable players out of the lineup for Durham, but so far, very back and forth style across. With possession, here's Matt Croft. Croft. John St. John slipped on the turf, gets back up, seems to be okay. Ball's up top, here's Croft. 
Croft fakes the pass. Now he's being bothered. Good defense coming from Jordan Robertson. Robertson just trying to let the shot clock expire. One on the clock, the horn sounds. And Niagara takes over. Shot clock violation against Durham. We've played three minutes and 45 seconds. We're still scoreless. Ball's back up top. Robertson couldn't connect. Pressure coming from the turf. Dog over and back. Oh, I thought Nevin Sullivan was there. It's a bad, not a bad call, I guess, but a very questionable call as could have easily it, sprung a break. Officials are told to play the slow whistle. Obviously, if it comes out, as we watch Goddard come in and score the opening goal, but to finish that thought, the officials are told to play the slow whistle, see if Durham can get there, but obviously it does come out. It is the correct call, but technically based on game management and what you see from the floor, the slow whistle may have been better there is what Durham's argument was. Well, Dylan Goddard, the 53rd overall draft pick by the Buffalo Bandits in 2013, opens the scoring here at the Meridian Center. 1-0 for the visiting Durham Turf Dogs. And we're going to get a look here. That shot, I think it's just a cut through. And, yeah, around the corner, he's going to go straight to the net and puts it through the legs of Danko. And when he was playing in Clarington, he was pretty much just an outside shooter guy. And when he got drafted by Buffalo, I had a chance to talk with him, playing with guys like Stainhouse and Tavares in their camp, as he's got it again. That one off the pipe, Joe Watson thought it was in. But he said that really changed his mindset. And you see a guy like Tavares has played so long, not afraid to go to the middle, and mm -hmm. he had some good talks with Tavares, and that's a pretty good guy to learn from. Came back to Sealax, and he said it was great learning experience. He got a lot more looks going to the net. Well, the outside blast from the Niagara Lock Monsters ties it up at one. And there's an outside look that number 16 for Niagara couldn't pass up, and that is Corey Fowler. So we mentioned he can easily put up eight, nine points a game. And currently, coming into today's game, he's fourth in Sealax all time. Well, and he's one of those guys that they'll look to to change the momentum of a game too. And he can take that shot, he can pull it out, almost like the aforementioned Stainhouse where he can just sort of sit back and let everyone kind of fall asleep and then go to the net. So loose ball battle, Dylan Goddard trying to Fight off three lock monsters. In there to help him is number 25, Nevin Sullivan. Goddard couldn't control. Bad pass. And now it's a turnover. Here comes Sullivan. He's got a break. Sullivan the shot. What a save by Connor Danko. Yeah, Danko really bails out. I believe it was Jordan Houtby. Tried that shovel pass. And yeah, you, I think you call it out. Ill-advised to say the least. <laughs> yeah. Just kind of no-look pass that absolutely did not work. And now Niagara coming back the other way. Two on three as teams are changing. Here's Brooker Muir. Muir, the draft pick of the New England Black Wolves. One of their lighter cuts in the camp as they score. <laughs> Zach Reed, it looks like, as we get blown halfway down the street by yeah. the air horn. but It's got to be the loudest horn in Sealax. Well, it doesn't help. They were <laughs> sitting right underneath of them. But yeah, Zach Reed on that blast as we'll get another look. Just a quick release. Yeah, and I don't think that Cole Murray was ready for it. When you don't play a lot, it's hard to get your first set. And look how far back in the net Murray is. He's just kind of shuffling along the line here at this point. And not only has he not got a look, he hasn't even dressed for a couple of games. For the most part of the season, he's been number three on the depth chart. So balls up top. There's a shot. Danko, who is... The probable and number one starter for the Niagara Lock Monsters. Other goaltenders, though, on Niagara, very good depth chart for them. Jay Priest is the backup this afternoon. Ball coming the other way with possession. Thomas Hogarth, number 66, cuts to the middle, but he gets shoved into the corner. Now it's Mike Triolo. Triolo swings it to the far side. Jeff McNulty. McNulty. Down low to the near side, Triolo cuts to the middle, crease dive, hits oh, the crossbar. throw the flag. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Triolo using that size advantage, he did that so well in the NLL Combine game, and that I think is what caused Dur uh, Buffalo to pick him up. Uh, later round pickup for, for Treasy there, but you know he uses that size well, and now he sets up on defense, something he does very well, and how about Favero, wide open look. <laughs> 
Brad Favero had all the time in the world cutting from the near side, cut the floor in half east to west there, and when he cut across the crease, it was him and Murray, and he had a much bigger step on Cole Murray there. Not too many guys from the first ever year of the Canadian Lacrosse League, but Brad Favero is one of them. And just look, eyes up the floor here. I think that's what's going to set up the goal from uh, Andrew Potter looking down floor all the way. Him and Favero had some chemistry along with Fowler when he was with the team before. They're going to look to do more of that. So we've played seven minutes. Back comes Niagara on the break. A shot. Murray steps to his right and makes the save. Yeah, when you're goaltender, you know he hasn't played well. You know he's given up a couple here. You don't want to be giving up two on nobodies. <laughs> That's not, as a goaltender myself, that's when I look to the bench and I just say, really? Yeah. That's on, what boys. we're going to do? So Durham sets up on offense. Cross. Danko steps out and goes in the butterfly again to make the save. Danko, a very mobile and hybrid style goaltender in Sealax. Really likes to step out and go down on every single shot if possible. It's been interesting to see. I'm going to try not to talk through another goal here, but... It's been interesting to see the evolution of the Sealax goaltender. Mm -hmm. The early years, they were all stand up. They were way out top, and they were looking to play the ball more. Now it's a much more traditional goaltender set than what you're used to seeing. Mark Farthing got it up top. Ooh. Nice spin from McCrory. Now they have an offensive look with 20 on the shot. They'll just pull it all the way back up top. And here's, looked like it was going to Mick Mahan, but now he gets it. 10 on the shot clock. Triolo thought he had one off the crossbar on the crease dive last attempt. Oh. Shovel pass, just going to let the shot clock run out, and that'll be a whistle. So we have six minutes and 48 seconds remaining into the opening quarter. We'll step aside. 3 1 Niagara here from the Meridian Center. Back inside the Meridian Center. 3-1 the score. Niagara leads here in the closing Sunday afternoon, Super Bowl Sunday of week number four, the halfway point of this 2016 regular season. Spencer Tangway alongside Matt Latour, excuse me, Matthew Carrick. I'm calling you Matt Latour, who I worked with in the double IHF tournament here a few weeks ago. I was going to say, is he a better player than me? I'll take it. Now you're giving him a little too much credit as oh. the Durham Turf Dogs get an outside one that Connor Danko is going to want back. Yeah, Jeff McNulty, I don't think that's his fault. There was a couple guys in the zone, and it may have bounced off as many as two separate players on its way in, and just not really much that he can do on that one. As we said, McNulty going to be called into action a lot here with all those uh, vacancies that we said, and yet I think it hits the top. Man. You can see Fowler look to the sky there. So a deflection makes it 3-2. Niagara's had three pretty impressive goals to start today's game. Danko led in one that he wanted back there. It's 3-2 here now as Durham 
comes in hot. Ball swings to the far side. Stepping away from traffic, tried to go across the crease, but getting a stick on that was Brian Newfeld. If Niagara scores, I gotta take off. Their hoodies are 10% off for 10 minutes. It's a nice little promotion here at the Meridian Center. They're nice looking hoodies too. Muir to Robertson, now to the far side off the bench. Tainhouse the, the shot, but a save by Murray. I want one of those purple berry sunglasses. <laughs> Purple's the color nowadays. There's a shot that went off a helmet of one of the players. Picked up by Niagara, and they go back up top through Robertson. Swim move. Caputo the shot. Oh, oh, what a fake from Caputo to open that shooting lane himself. Goodness. Caputo again looks to come in. Underhand shot. Murray's down, but that one goes wide. He's got it again. Now Robertson. Mears in the middle, causing havoc, setting a screen, rolling. Robertson elects to shoot, though, and now it comes right out to Brooker Muir. Real long, extended offensive set now for Niagara. A lot of Caputo who's now gone to the bench. Here's Potter. Oh, right now, into the kidney pads of Eric Schuel. Schuel's playing goalie there. I'm sure that had to feel it. As Niagara's getting a full change. Goodness. This is like a power play right now. Doing the smart thing, though, taking one guy at a time as they got the long run to get into the correct door. Robertson the shot. Rebound off the dasher board was controlled by Niagara. That should have been over and back about six times. How about <laughs> the stick work for Niagara to keep the play alive? Here's Shul. Shul, who took one for the team, goes off the floor. He'll just run it off and be okay. Four minutes exactly remaining in the opening quarter. 3-2. Last time these two teams met, 14-13 the score. Very similar storyline so far. Ball flips to the middle, Danko down, right in the shoulder pads, makes the save. That's a good look. I think it flipped to McNulty quick, right in tight. And he, we saw that massive shot that he's already got. They're missing the shot from Gearin and Hopcroft. They'll probably put McNulty up top here a lot here this afternoon. Well, with McNulty up top, he can play down low too, so he'll look to go to the middle and really open up the floor like we just saw there, but Danko made the save. Well, and I go back to Goddard. A couple of years ago, you couldn't do that because he would be your outside shooter, and you can't have all these guys up top. That just gives one mm -hmm. thing for the defense to focus on as Slade gets a shot that Murray gobbles up. Well, if Goddard had another foot on him, I'd say he's Mark Matthews because he reminds me with his outside shot, yeah, that's really right. likes to shoot I with think, possession. Matt I think Croft. he'll take that too. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Durham just controlling down low in the corner. Eight on the shot clock. They go down low, but Danko steps out and just picks off that pass. Danko outlet pass to Brandon Slade, who's taking his time coming over half. Here's Niagara's offensive look. Last time down the floor, about a two-minute possession time. Shot off the wow. dasher board. Dustin Gatt got drilled, but he's one of those spark plug players. I love watching him. His rookie season last year I thought was very uh, underrated from Gatt as he goes after this loose ball now with Newfeld. Well, you should have seen when Gatt played with his brother Dylan Gatt, his younger brother for Welland and St. Catharines. The two of them, the dynamic duo, if one of them ever got hit by someone, sparked the other one, and absolutely. I think this is in the carpet here is they're going to draw it, come nine feet away from the wall and, and draw if no one's got possession. One is, the, of the is the correct call, but maybe they're taking it to center. Looks like one of the unfortunate things about Sealax is the carpet, of course. Some of it doesn't fit completely on each turf and each arena. But right now, the officials are talking where they're going to go. And now, it looks like they're going to do a draw ball down back where the ball went under the turf. So if that's the call, and yeah, it is. Yeah, I think that's the correct call. It's supposed to go... That's where they're going to do it, right here. I'm trying to check. I got this fancy rule book here, but. That's a lot of reading. I know. Maybe our director, Alex Frazzo, has a little more insight on that. As I he doubt it. Looks like he does <laughs> not. If he knows the rule on this, but he does not. So we'll, tr we'll try to get a ruling. But as of right now, possession is awarded to the Niagara Lock Monsters on that. They come back down, and they get a good scoring chance. Niagara won that rare draw ball you see in the offensive zone. Brooker Muir. 
Muir with it, spins away, just allowing the Niagara Lock Monster to come off the bench. Muir cutting to the middle outside, going to the inside, underhand shot, turned aside by Murray. Newfeld flips it, back to Brooker Muir. Two minutes, 10 seconds remaining in the quarter. Muir to Newfeld, back to Muir, the shot. Murray though, better save on his knee. Starting to heat up here as Murray's now starting to see the ball real well and that's for goalies who don't play a lot, that takes a couple minutes. There's another fantastic save. Maybe that extended set by Niagara got him in the groove. It was actually <laughs> detrimental to Niagara. Well, the shots right now, they're not on the board here, but they got to be at least 12 to 5, maybe if not more, a wider spread. As Niagara's had definitely the majority of the control. Durham, though, coming back. They're in this game, 3-2 the score. There's a shot and they score. The original shot went off the Niagara Lock Monsters defender, picking it up. We'll try to figure out who that is. I believe that is McNulty with his second of the game and puts it five hole on Connor Danko. We'll get another look at how that one went in. The outside blast went right off the defender for the Niagara Lock Monsters. We'll take a look. Yeah, Durham does like to mix it up as they've done over the last couple of years. They'll score a bunch from outside and then that's when they'll start putting it down in the middle and just keeping those defensive guessing. Whoa. Once again, Murray takes away a fantastic scoring chance. Oh, what a pass. They got a berry here. <laughs> just to make that pass a highlight, 200 foot pass absolutely threads the needle right on a string into the stick. They got a minute and 10 on the game clock. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. They go to the far side. Cutting to the middle is Joe Wasson. Now he's setting a high seal. Up top, off the goal post. Oh. And back up top, Triolo. Down low to the corner, under 60 seconds. Triolo gets it to McRory. There's a shot. Better right pad saved by Danko. Niagara back the other way. Looked like the inside of the foot, though. Danko does not look comfortable in the crease here today. He's making the saves, but they're just by the skin of his teeth, pretty much. Well, Murray read that correctly, went down, but that's going to be over and back because it did not touch a Durham player off the back wall and over half. One on one the other way. Here's Triolo. Triolo, the shot, hits the goal. Goal post, and I believe some of the crossbar. And yeah, it goes Mitch, over Danko. Mitch Dumont's been, been taken on Triolo pretty much single-handedly here, but he got matched up with Ferrero and decided to go right on. Sorry, Brad Favero. Six on five. Murray's on the bench. Remaining 13 seconds. They go to the crease. Danko slides oh. and makes the save. Gets oh. up, and they oh. score. I thought Danko had that. He's saying that Hogarth is in the crease and may have a shot, may have an argument. We'll see if we can get a second look here, but... How about Hogarth to follow the ball to the crease and be in position to grab that rebound? Well, it's now a 4-3 game for the Durham Turf Dogs. Everybody's looking for the scoreboard because they know it was close. But Danko definitely, I think, has a point here. We to get a look at the original shot, and uh, they score on it. Is that the same goal? Because there's here no is. one close. Oh, you know what? They're saying that after the original shot, when he made the save, the man ran through the crease as the ball was still there. I think is what they're saying, but we go back to the rule book again. <laughs> Handy dandy rule book on, his, on hand. Niagara has a chance though. Durham was slowly just watching the ball as the time was ticking off, but Buswell almost had a clear open look. So the score, 4-3 in favor of the visiting Durham Turf Dogs. We'll step aside, and we'll be right back here in the Meridian Center momentarily.
We're almost set for the second quarter, but let's take a look at our today's trivia question. Lock Monster Netminder, Connor Danko, played for three teams in his junior career. Those teams were the Welland Warlords, St. Catharines Athletics, and what other Junior A team? Tweet us your answer to JVI Video and CLAX League. The Welland Warlords, St. Catharines Athletics, and one other team. Tweet us your answer at JVI Video. I got it. We're underway here in the second quarter. Possession in control of the Niagara Lock Monsters. 23 on the shot. Brooker Muir tried an outside blast, but it's blocked and goes off. I believe that is Dylan Goddard who's trying to find it, but now Phil Caputo has it. Caputo with possession, spins away from two turf dogs. Seven on the shot clock. Caputo goes up top through Newfeld. They need a shot, outside shot, but Murray's there to make the save. Long stretch pass off the bench, controlled by the Durham Turf Dogs. They're setting up an offense for the first time this quarter. If you're just joining us, Spencer Tangway alongside Matthew Carrick to call today's game. 4-3 for the Turf Dogs. Wasson, good look on the shot, but Mick Mahan had a better shot. Danko to Caputo on the near side. Caputo over half. He's going to go for a change and then do a hidden ball trick. Caputo had it, and what now connects with Corey Fowler. Fowler dishes off. Brad Favero. Favero back to Fowler. Fowler the shot. Murray's there to make the save. Rebound. Wide open cage. Wide open net on the rebound for the Niagara Hawk Monsters. It was Favero. I think through the original blast. Yeah, a lot of work from two of the original Liagra Lock Monster members, Brad Favero, Corey Fowler. They go back and forth with each other. And then Brandon Slade sliding in last minute to uh, put that one home. As you said, wide open. I'm going to get my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Face-off possession controlled by the Durham Turf Dogs. Durham, who plays at the General Motors Center, Won the first meeting this year between these two teams as they come in and they score. Danko got beat five hole by number 14, Ryan McCrory. Yeah, and there's Slade again sliding over. He gets to McCrory, but just not, not in time. <clears throat> as he goes, uh, those two collided right hard, and I think maybe that distracted Danko a little bit as this is just a straight shot. Well, Danko went down, he was in correct position, but he just didn't get there in time as it beat him right between the wickets of the five hole. Well, there's a little stumble. It looked like a, almost a mini pick that was thrown there, and it, it sort of looked like that was going to be the shot. I think that's what Danko was set for. And then as Slade came over the top, the slide just a little late from McRory. Well, now Danko threw it up the floor. Here they come back, three on three. There's a shot by Buzzwell. Better left pad save coming from Cole Murray. Murray starts today's game in favor of Ryan Masters, who was unable to attend today's game here on CLAX 1. Battle continues. Murray's throwing a stick out there. Three Durham Turf Dogs and now three Lock Monsters as Brian Neufeld joins the battle. Still can't find it. This is just like what happened in the first quarter. You think they'll blow it dead soon. But Niagara oh. lost that, but it looked like Durham went through the crease there. Yeah, right away, Mike Atwood was screaming back in. But uh, there was a bit of a shovel pass there from Rennie. And I think he got it away just before stepping in. Well, here's Dylan Goddard. Goddard, he's got one tonight. There's an outside shot. Danko side shuffle to his right. And there's a nasty hit. See if it draws a penalty. And it's not going to. That's pretty much the definition of a complete no-no hit. As Murray has it. Excuse me, McNulty. McNulty up top, shot, right pads, right shoulder save from Connor Danko. Tainhouse, long stretch pass, oh beautiful my connection. Must be that side of the floor. Zach Bowen was out here with Andrew Tober, who unable to go here this afternoon, but those two were practicing that pass and mm. nailing it every single time. And we've seen a couple of beauties already from the Lock Monsters. 
while I'll never forget when we were calling the President's Cup at the Jack Gaycliffe Arena. Oh, goodness. And I forget which goaltender it was, but I believe it was the Capital Region Axman yeah. starter. Yeah, it was. Who could throw bombs like crazy from his knees, and it was with a wooden stick, not just a little stick they have to use in Sealax, and of course Pro, but he might be the best passer as a goaltender I've ever seen. As of course the St. Catherine Saints, who a lot of these players on both teams played for during summer ball. There's a shot, but a better stick coming from the Durham Turf Dogs defender to get a little interference on that. Niagara controls, five on the shot clock, outside, well wide of the cage, and it's going to go right into the box. So a shot clock violation as the Durham Turf Dogs bench hollering across the field at Dale Set, today's technical official. Number of players in this game from the Capital Region Axemen, Nevin Sullivan, Tim Bergen. Bergen not in the lineup for, for Durham, but he does play for the Axemen. I think the guy you're looking for is uh, Brett Paris. Yep. A goaltender that just literally, no, it's, it's almost as if he's throwing no-look passes right on a string. Down the street at the Rex Steimers Arena back in August. The Lock Monsters control on offense. The score, 5-4 for the visiting Durham Turf Dogs. Niagara getting a change, it's up top. Here's Zach Reed. Zach, his brother, is the Oakville Junior C coach, and he also coached in the Welland Warlords and Generals organization. And a good player himself. Zach Reed, of course, here on the Niagara Lock Monsters. Here's John St. John. Goes to the far side. They swing it down low. John St. John getting a chain. Goddard up top connects. Looks to the middle. He has Nevin Sullivan, but he goes by himself. Flip pass. Great stick by Dustin Gatt. Gatt leading the rush. Three on three. They come back the other way. Settles it down, and he'll go for a change. Fresh legs for Niagara coming on. 9.15 remaining here in the opening half. As what has been only nine goals so far in today's broadcast. Cross floor pass, comes back to the near side. Tainhouse looks to the middle, couldn't get it through. He finds the rebound though. They'll get a fresh 30, cross crease. Picked up now by number 67, Joel Coyle. Here's Caputo. Phil Caputo, he's got a lane, goes to the net, well wide. Off the glass, picked up by Niagara. Niagara feeds it, there's a shot wide and that's gonna be an over and back call. Off the dasher board and over and back. Caputo, the first overall pick in this year's Sealax draft. Took on four <laughs> Durham defenders there. I think there may be a bit of a conversation asking him to pull that one out. There's a shot. Murray's on the ground. It looks like he held it out. McNulty, cross crease shot. Got that pass through from Thomas Hogarth. Hogarth, one of the players to watch today. Keep your eye on 66. Green is back on defense now up top. Here's Jordan Robertson. Bounce pass up top. Mitch Dumont has control. He just flips it, and he goes down low into the middle. Corey Fowler likes to shoot from that area of the floor. Cross crease, excuse me, cross floor. Bounce pass, and now in control of Tim Edwards. Edwards, flip pass. What a effort from Niagara, oh. but a better stick save from the netminder. Mitch Dumont doesn't get many offensive opportunities. Had one there after a great fake by Tim Edwards, who's having a fantastic start to this Sealax season. Well, I love seeing some of the players that aren't usually up on offense having to play offense as they play a lot of defense and transition in summer ball. You see some of the looks they get and some of the stick skills. As that one, believe, went off It went off the player. bucket of Tim Edwards. And they're going to discuss, and John Zabel gets the call correct. So the officials will discuss, we'll step aside, and we'll go to Barry for some live footage between Southwest and the Blizzard.
Welcome back inside the Meridian Center. Quick footage there from the Barry Molson Center. Where it's the defending champions taking on the Southwest Cyclops. A score, 7-3. to three. Here comes Durham, though, back the other way. Durham currently sits atop of the league with a record of 3-1, and one, but they're shorthanded today. A lot of key players out of the lineup. No Garen, no Vredenberg, and no Hopcroft, just to name a few. Here's McRory. Number 44, 14, excuse me. On to the middle of the shot. Danko's there in time this time. Gets up as there could have been a rebound. McRory finds it in the far corner. McRory, flip pass, what a pass. Now it's controlled up top. John St. John now has possession. Delayed penalty coming against Niagara. As heading to the box, it's always the feisty Brooker Muir who is currently playing hockey as well for the Niagara Whalers Junior A hockey program. But he's a draft pick of the, draft pick of the New England Black Wolves. Yeah, it'll be a slashing call. As I believe that's our first penalty of the game. Two teams that yeah. are pretty well disciplined and don't get into any of the nasty stuff. Well, I've seen a lot of Southwest games and it seems every time I've gone to the Silaps, the scorekeeper has had to bring a couple extra pens with him. As they get it inside and wow. they score, no chance for Connor Danko on that one. Well, that's why Thomas Hogarth is our player to watch, known more for his defense, but he just has got that good footwork as he gets around the crease and uses his size and his height to just kind of reach around Danko there. Danko not as tall as some of the other goaltenders you would see. But how about that pass to start it off in the nifty move that momentum's going to the right, just the kick back with the stick into the open side. That's a good goal from uh, Hogarth there. Well, in, on Friday in Oswegan, Corey Thompson, a very similar goal, but he had a crease dive goal and went back short side that in midair. That could, could be my goal of the year so far. Dylan Goddard scored from his backside earlier on at the GM Center earlier this season. I think it's between those two for which one I like better. So the quick work of the power play, they go one for one. And the Lock Monsters unable to successfully kill off that penalty to Brooker Muir. Long outside shot off the dasher board, picked up by Newfeld. Down low, now it's to Tainhouse. Tainhouse gets a shot, but Murray, who has really settled down, really taking control for the Durham Turf Dogs here. He really has settled in nicely, and it came on the back half of that first period. He, one thing that they're doing real well is canceling the transition game some of those breakout passes, but it's really not doing much, especially here in the uh, short run quarter. Here's Dylan Goddard. Goddard down low to John St. John. Goddard through the middle, gets shoved behind the net. Back down to him, Dylan Goddard. Goddard couldn't get a shot off. Muir's there, Niagara picks it up, two on one they come. Muir has Tainhouse. Three off the bench now, there's a shot, oh, just off the bar. And as I say, they've negated the transition well, there's a three on one. Fowler gives it to Newfeld. Fresh legs for the Niagara Lock Monsters. Shot turned aside. Loose ball stays in the crease in possession of Cole Murray. Four and a half remaining here in the second quarter in our opening half. A band performance still to come at halftime. John St. John goes east-west and gets off the floor. Now they come to Jeff McNulty. McNulty, lots of time, looks to just get back up top. 10 on the shot clock, McNulty across the floor, long blast, Danko's well out of his net to make the save. Loose ball picked up, Durham doing a fine job on this offensive set now, similar to Niagara's in the opening quarter. Full 30, down low, McNulty couldn't get it, looks like he reached in the crease. Yeah, you can reach in as long as your feet come stay out, so that's okay, I was more concerned with the battle he had with Edwards as this one goes way high into the seats. So a souvenir for our fan. Low fan on that <laughs> side of the building. Well, all the fans have been told to sit on this side. Get a good look at those benches and the advertisements over on that far side. So it's not a big race for that one. As they won't be able to do the wave here at the Meridian Center today. 
Tainhouse to the middle. Almost had Caputo, but now it's in possession of Cole Murray. Loose ball battle. Durham's there, and now Patrick McRory gets sent to the floor, and that's going to draw a penalty. Yes, the first one they, they got away with, Riley Campbell come in just to have a word, but I think running off and off the floor is Patrick McRory, but the first one they got away with just a possession call, uh, and you know that veteran official John Watson isn't going to let it happen twice. Here's I think that's the hint. The, I think that's the question from, I believe it's Robertson, uh, yeah, square right, <laughs> right in the shoulder bar, right in the back, right on top of the numbers. And it, Robertson goes off. Yeah, you missed the replay, sorry, but <laughs> as he looks up for it. But, yeah, that's, like I said, the second time it's happened, and you, you know they're not going to let too many of them go because as guys test the line, it's going to get more and more fierce. Well, it's hard to defend a player when he hits a guy like that on the back. So this is... The Durham Turf Dogs second look in the power play. 100% this afternoon. Here's McNulty. Cross the floor up top. Triolo gets it to the corner and what a snipe up top. I believe it's Matt Croak who's going to end up with the goal here. Another Peterborough boy. They seem to be all over this Durham roster but I want you to watch on the replay. The player to watch Thomas Hill. He just goal line stand as we're on Super Bowl Sunday. Takes that moved out of the way. So with that goal, make that four unanswered for the Durham Turf Dogs, and now it's seven four in favor of the visitors. Durham commits to this game, sitting atop the division, four games played, three and one. So very good start for the Durham Turf Dogs. One other game happening, it's the Southwest Cyclops at the Barry Molson Center. A score of eight to three there. Sounds like Barry rebounding nicely from what was a pretty one-sided affair last week, that game you called in Southwest. Mm -hmm. Well, Southwest has been involved with many games that have, what a oh. save! <laughs> As that might be the save of the oh, year. Oh my goodness. From Cole Murray, no less. His first start, his first time in the Meridian Center on the floor, and he just robbed the Niagara Lock Monsters of their fifth goal of the game. We'll definitely try to get you another look Rack at that up. one. <laughs> As Cole McMurray will be looking to the big board to see him smile on that one. Here comes Durham, but Brooker Muir's there to take that away from the Peterborough native. Muir. Looks to go to the bench. Newfeld just pulls it back. Here's Caputo the shot. They can't beat him in, from inside, Matt, so they'll just try to throw everything at him. As now Tainhouse. Tainhouse gets it poked away. Loose ball picked up by Durham, and they run behind their net. Big hit. Loose ball. Murray's on the ground to take that away. And a bit of a wobble in the step of whoever that turf dog player was that got taken out hard. And that one's a good one, right on the number bar on the shoulder and just following right through with the man on ball. Of course, into the number ball, number bar, loose ball, name bar rather, is why they went to the box. As Caputo gets involved here with Cody McMahon. So we thought we may see a little tussle there. Our first fight of today's game is we're gonna get a penalty. And it's going against the Durham Turf Dogs for unsportsmanlike conduct, their first of today's game. Yeah, Two off, penalties. Offsetting here up front, sportsmanlike. It was Caputo that went after McMahon. And Cody McMahon out of the Orangeville camp. He, uh, no stranger to that side of the game. Phil Caputo, definitely more the offensive weapon, but they'll take that, I think. So Danko with under a minute to play now, 103. Left exactly on the game clock here that hangs above center floor, the Meridian Center. Gets it up, but back come the Durham Turf Dogs. Turnover on the Niagara Lock Monsters power, four on four, excuse me. Oh. Big save by Danko, but what power and what just courage from the Durham Turf Dog player to get that. That was Mike Triolo going in on Jordan Robertson. As well, Favero scores the other way. 
It was Triolo who used to open the floor for Robertson when they were with the Beaches organization. So Robertson knows all about his strength. But it uh, looks like maybe Tainhouse gets this goal. Well, Tainhouse made the original shot. As we'll take another look here. Tainhouse is on the left. The shot, big save. And then on the crease, see if we can find out who that is. Yeah, it is Fuber. Bright yellow shoes. So Favero gets another one tonight. Lock Monsters within two. 7-5 the score. A minute and 21 remaining on the minor penalties against the Durham Turf Dogs and the Niagara Lock Monsters. Halftime is in sight. The score is 7-5 here at the Meridian Center. These two teams don't like each other at all. Durham took one away from the Niagara Lock Monsters at home in week one. 14-13 was the final as Niagara smartly just calls timeout and they'll get their last shot with 21.9 left on the game clock. See who they're going to throw out here. As we're going to look at that graphic from the last time they met, and it was a lot of Corey Fowler, eight points in the last second goal. I believe it was Jeff McNulty on the far side, if I'm not mistaken, but a four goal performance also from Dylan Goddard tonight. Second game in the career of Mike Triola, who's been pretty good here in Sealax in the first you, couple weeks. If you look at the bottom stat, the penalty minutes, six for the Lock Monsters and only 12 for the Durham Turf Dogs, really makes this an only 18 minutes total for the entire game. Really a lot of five on five lacrosse that goes on in these two teams when they meet. So there's only 21.9, Danko remains in the cage and they'll play four on four lacrosse. So they're not gonna pull Connor Danko, they elect to go with four and I see Tainos on the floor. For some reason though, Niagara has five players on the floor. And, and now Danko yeah. goes off. I was wondering if they were going to stall it a little with 21 seconds just to kind of confuse things, but. So the time is underway. Here's Jordan Robertson up top. They're waiting for the perfect shot. The game clock difference is two. There's only 10 on the shot clock, 12 on the game clock. They come to the near side. Robertson to the far side. They look to the middle. They can't connect, and that should do it for oh. that shot clock as the game clock will stop with point. 2-5 on the clock. Fowler got drilled in the numbers. It actually stopped with about two seconds on it, and that gives them the open look. A nice nice play call, though. Robertson went straight down the middle right off the draw, and then Fowler slid over into the spot that he opened up and uh, almost worked. Well, the teams will head off. The score, Durham 7, Niagara 5, right here on the Meridian center floor. A band performance to take us into the halftime intermission show. Enjoy, we'll be back with live third quarter action in 15 minutes time.
three and a half minutes until the start of the third quarter here at the Meridian Center, downtown Niagara. We'll send it to Barry for third quarter action. We're at the Blizzard 8, Southwest 4. We'll get some repairs and we'll see if we get any sort of update on him. A shot score! Fired home by Michael Gillen as it squeaks through the wickets of Don Alton. And the Barry Blizzard have nine. It's once more a five goal game. have a penalty here for tripping I believe Shane Scott gets his second goal of the game that one a little more lucky than was the previous one and the Cyclops are going to go to the power play is heading off is Johnny Ray I believe it's a tripping call and it'll be a hold to Ray and the Blizzard to their fourth power play. A shot, oh, and a nice save made there by Dinely. And he hasn't been overly busy, but when he has been, he's been extremely sharp, and he's played like the MVP that he was just one season ago. A shot, Dinely makes that save, and the ball goes high in the air and out at center. Now a chance in over the line. A shot oh, is fired just wide. And letting go of that was Cody Ward. And he fired it wide. And Dinely does a good job to just send the ball the length of the floor and kill off a bit of time. 1-10 to go in the penalty. The first half is nearly off the board. Excuse me. Oh boy, uh, here are the Blizzard, or rather the Cyclops. A shot from the blue line by Don Keene is fired just wide. Cyclops with it again, 45 to go in the penalty as Dinely makes another save. And he is going to fire this ball up the floor and the Blizzard are changing. Rob Coger for Barry. Still with it, Coger down low. He's smacked hard into the end boards. And he's a little shaken up after that, but he looks none the worse for wear. Back the other way come the Cyclops. Shot by the Cyclops. They score on the rebound. It is fired home. Dinely made the initial save, but picking up the rebound and putting it in behind him is uh, I believe it was uh, maybe uh, Kranz but we'll get a look or a, an announcement on that It's Patrick Corbett who scores on the power play. 9-5, the Barry Blizzard lead. Nine minutes to play in the quarter. Centered in front of the goal by board. That didn't work. But the Cyclops are quick to regroup. Back at the blue line, Spencer Pike with it. Now he gets it. Pike tried to center and a whistle here and it is going to be Cyclops ball still here's Pike the first half is in the books the second half about to start 
Tweet us who you think will be your today's three stars of the game at JVI Video. A lot of stars and a lot of options to choose from. Tweet us who you think will be today's three stars at JVI Video. Corey Fowler leads the way with four points, a goal and three assists. Uh, Thomas Hogarth, uh, two goals and one assist. Mike Triolo also with three points, all of them assists so far in this game. A lot of ink on the page, though, as Niagara and Durham, both of them pretty characteristic for both of these teams, spreading the ball around and uh, getting everybody involved in the offense. Well, we're set to go for second half action. This half, the Niagara Lock Monsters, who are wearing their purple uniforms, will run from right to left across your screen. Durham will run the opposite, left to right, in their bright green with gray and black numbering. Niagara wins the opening draw in the second half. Here's Reed. Reed goes to the bench. Fresh legs coming on for the Lock Monsters. Niagara, of course, perfect 1-0 at home and a very impressive 15-6 win a week ago. They get it up top. Tynehouse, there's a blast off the dasher board. Shot clock violation. Durham takes over. Here's the Turf Dogs. Wasson, cross the floor. Through John St. John, they go to the far side. Out of the box come the two penalized players. There's a shot off the oh, crossbar. Cody McMahon and Phil Caputo. And it was McMahon just letting that one go over the shoulder of Danko. Well, they tried to do the same thing over Danko, but McMahon just couldn't reach out and get that. So over and back to call. Niagara takes over possession. 7-5 the score here if you're just joining us here on the JVI Sports Network. Sealax TV1. Spencer Tangway here to call today's game alongside my great partner Matt Carrick and the rest of the broadcast crew here at the Meridian Center on Super Bowl Sunday. Matt Nay Sealax for you. With the ball. Niagara goes back up top through number 15. That's Brad Favero. A few himself tonight. Almost a helper there as they got an outside shot. Murray, who makes his first start of the season very well and very confident in the cage so far for Durham. Has my vote for play of the game so far with that oh. left arm save. He was down and out. Goaltending. Very good performances from both netminders today. 7-5 the score. As that pass picked off and a penalty coming. John Zabo, the back official, today's crew chief, making a penalty for interference against Durham. Yeah, Tim Edwards, either him or Slade got tripped up a little bit and Mark Farthing heading to the box. I almost said Pete Rennie because it's the old school Toronto rock bucket. Yeah. But uh, it is Mark Farthing. He brought into camp, I forget who, who took him to camp this year, but uh, definitely one of those guys who, you know, they've been paying their dues for a very long time and doing a very good job in this league and others. And of course, with the Peterborough Lakers in MSL, one of the few non-NLL players on that lineup. If there's one or two more teams, he would definitely be in there. Well, look on the power play here for the Niagara oh. Lock Monsters. As I look down a couple rows below me, I see one of the all-time great fighters for the Welland Warlords Lacrosse Club. Great friends with a lot of players on each of these teams, Thomas O'Malley. Walked into the building, and I heard there's a great fight happening that just happened in Barry. We'll try to get you a look at that. So we'll try to find that at the next stoppage for you. As Durham, who's on the PK, trying to get it over oh, half. What a play. Oh, Phil Caputo. The back heel to save the over and back. He's got to do it again now. Goodness. Here's Fowler. Fowler back pedals up top. Back to Fowler. 13. There's a shot. But now possession awarded to Durham. There was no reset, so John Zabo, the top official, was counting down, and they ruled that shot didn't count. If that was a goal, I changed my vote. <laughs> because the back heel from Phil Caputo, right at center, he had two guys on him. Oh! oh! oh never mind. I changed my vote anyway. Good <laughs> Lord. Danko looks up to the heavens, wow. but he needed to look down as that ball... Goal of the year candidate right there for sure. Take another look at this one. Oh, my goodness. Rack it up, <laughs> Matty D. Woo. Goodness gracious. Jeff McNulty. Oh. The quick stick, you can call it a quick stick, but it's 
does the Vince Carter windmill through the legs. Oh. I mean, the NBA All-Star oh. game is a week away in Toronto. And if we're at the dunk contest, that might be a dunk right there. You might see between the legs, quick release. But this time, we see it on the turf. Oh, and man. count that as the eighth for Durham. And it's a shorthanded marker to make it even better. That was... I'm glad it happened in this building in yep. uh, glorious HD. That's going to look fantastic all year long. A lot of great buildings in this league. Sillaps Community Center, one of the oldest barns, and it's got a lot of character and history to it, and they score. Andrew Potter, welcome back. His first goal in his return to the Lock Monsters lineup. Gets the feed from Jordan Robertson. A great one is... Potter just gets to the mid, middle of the floor. It's been interesting how they've been using him. He's been pretty much defensive based and keeping him to the outside. But this time, oh, you can see the man breaks off coverage and that opens up Potter. And this is the late slide coming over from Patrick McRory. So a face-off violation. Dustin Gatt, who's taken a rare draw for Niagara, gets a win. Well, awarded it because Durham only had four guys on the floor. So Mahood makes the public address goal and out, and he says, welcome back, Andrew Potter. Welcome back from retirement. <laughs> yeah. Always good for Another players to come back, oh. and they score again. Well, this is what we set off the top. Out in that Durham game, the crowd started to get fired up. The bench started to get fired up, and now the ball's starting to roll a little bit here for Niagara as they put... A couple here, and they're down by one now. Uh, it's got a conversation over on the restraining line. Well, this well, is just going to be another pretty one. Just a few quick back-to-back -back goals, and this is where we've seen it in the first half, though, where Murray, he was puzzled, and he started getting peppered with shots to open the first half. But he bounced back real quickly, and we'll see if Niagara can keep up the pressure. It's a one-goal <laughs> game here at the Meridian Center. Talk about a yard sale on the floor as he loses his stick. Tainhouse back the other way. Tried to get another one. Quick blast. Better right pad, left pad save, excuse me, from the netminder. Change up shot for Tainhouse there after, yeah, the uh, stick check and a half. Tainhouse goes down low. They come across the floor to Fowler. Excuse me, that's not Fowler. That's number 66, Tim Edwards. Edwards spins away to the crease. Oh, almost had a cross crease beautiful play with Andrew Potter. Shot clock sounds, violation against Niagara. Okay, so on Twitter, we need your vote here. The Jeff McNulty goal or the Cole Murray save for play of the game? Because two spectacular ones so far. Can they share? I don't know. I don't think we've ever seen that before. Did we cut the trophy in half? How does that work? <laughs> it's a big trophy, too. <laughs> yeah. And it all depends on technical work if our director and crew can do that. But we'll see. Split screen the replay. <laughs> yeah. At the same time for our viewers here at the Meridian Center and you at home here on CLAX 1. 15 on the shot clock. As oh, they almost oh. had another beauty, but Tim, or excuse me, Cole Murray gets, gets uh, saved by his crossbar. Yeah, Fowler did a great job one on one to get open and. Oh, Riley Campbell just can't come away with it. Is Favero a great job on defense this time? Really just settling down. Durham now. Seven on the shot clock. Crease dive and he scores. What a crease dive individual effort for the Durham Turf Dogs. 9-7 as they reach right around Connor Danko. What's quickly becoming the trademark goal for Thomas Hogarth. Taking it out of the corner, tiptoeing that line. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how close he tiptoed the line here as he was on that far side of the crease. John Zabo in great position. He wants to see the replay. Here's a great look. Oh, my goodness, that's good. <laughs> the fans think it's a crease call. He's still up there. Oh, he may touch down. It's when it crosses the plane, though, not when it reaches the back of the net, remember as we see the flutter when he's already down, but I think that's a good one from Hogarth. Again, what's quickly becoming his trademark goal. So after that, which would normally be a play of the game candidate right there, a goal like that, 
as now we see pushing and shoving, pursuing, and here we go. Now a fight's gonna break out. Reed's going, and he's tied up there with number 55, Eric Shule. Shule. And we're still not done in front of the benches. This is a pretty good scrap, but Shule still got the bucket on. And Shule let Reed off the carpet. Oh, that could get oh, dangerous. look out now. But Shule, props to him and a good job just to back off as these two will go to the botch, go to the box, excuse me. But one of our first fights of the season, really, I've seen. As the penalties will get sorted out, let's take a look at that goal once again as we'll get another look at that crease dive goal. Well, you said we were may have had some issues there as we were close to the benches. That's how we got started at the melee at the Madame Center. This here's Hogarth, we get another look and just out of range as we look at it again. But credit to Shule and Zach Reed there as they both did great work getting, uh, letting each other off the carpet and not doing anything wrong. You know, uh, pardon me, Reed getting the bucket off for Shewell and great scrap here. I understand a great one out in Barry as well. So after the penalties get sorted out, this is what happened in Barry. Two players get caught up at the top of your screen oh. and here they go. They're gonna go toe to toe. As you'll see right here, they're gonna go toe to toe. A good battle here as they get sent to the floor. Looks like Tyler Roach, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm not sure who the other one is. But that's an update on the score, 9-5 from the Barry Molson Center. We've as seen some good scraps over the years from Matt Spanger, but I don't think that's who that was. We'll have to look it up here. Hold on. Be sure to tweet us your three-star selections of today's game at JVI Video as we'll get to those later on in today's contest. Good crowd on hand here at the Meridian Center. Super Bowl Sunday, Broncos still to come against the Panthers from San Fran. And Matt, if you're taking a pick, I hate to predict scores because I don't want to curse anybody, but I'm going to pick the Panthers to win this year. And I'll say the coin toss is ahead. Coin toss is ahead, eh? Yep. Some people say tails never fail, well, but... I think, I think Beyonce will stay awake. And I like the, uh, yeah, I, kinda, I, I like the I like the Panthers pick, unfortunately. And I also think we get a retirement announcement at the end of the game. As very possible. Back, officials very, uh, very cautious in around the benches as they should be. And both guys just get up and run off. And Josh Wasson picks up a game misconduct. He wasn't involved in the fight, but... He gets sent off here, and then we go back to our scrap up in Barry. So Wasson is done hitting the showers early, going to his Super Bowl party prematurely as he has some words for the officials as he's leaving the floor. It was Tyler Roach against Blair Goss is that fight up in Barry. As we still try and sort this one out. That's John Zabo doing all the talking and the signal. John Watson coming towards your screen. And of course, Dale Set, the technical official. So Durham having to do without Josh Watson on this one. So Watson's done for the day. We still have 9.07 left in the third quarter here at the Meridian Center. And the Niagara Lock Monsters, good job to battle back. The score, though, 9 7, as Connor Danko has been really holding him in this game so far. But. Today's trivia question involved the starting netminder for the Danko, for the Lock Monsters, Connor Danko, excuse me. Lock Monster netminder Connor Danko played for three teams in his junior career. And those teams were St. Catharines, Welland, and of course, the Lift Lock City, Peterborough Lakers. I got it. Which my partner, Matt Carrick, got pretty, pretty soon after I read the question. So props to Matt Carrick and the rest of you at home who got that one as I well. I wasn't aware of the Welland one, though. That's a, that's a good one. Ooh, I like that one. Tricky. You should have done two out of three. <laughs> Get a nice little Jeopardy answer as we go two on one for Niagara and they score. There's Brian Newfeld on the goal, outside blast, and it's a back within a one goal game here at the Meridian. 
We'll take another look right here at the replay. Newfeld makes it 9-8 on this outside blast. Take another look at this replay. Yeah, just straight in transition and the defender gets tied up a little bit with Caputo, like you said, running a little bit of blocker there. And that opens up the bit of a screen and then opens up the shooting lane. And well, Lock Monsters a got a little bit of light and a little bit of spark coming now. It was four unanswered earlier in that opening half for the Durham Turf Dogs. Make that a couple unanswered for Niagara. Coming to the near side, Tainhouse flip pass to Caputo. Fakes, goes back up top and settles down. Down back low to Tainhouse. Tainhouse across, shot, oh, good stick from number 25, Nevin Sullivan. I think that was Potter they were looking for. Oh, and after the great defensive goal, Joel Coyle. Just stepping in, just trying to beat the shot clock. And this is the difference between goaltenders at this level and the NLL, NLL level. When you start getting them rattled, how quickly do they rebound? Cole Murray has the, uh, has the run going against him right now. And this one, remember back earlier we showed you he was back a little bit in the net. He's starting to creep back towards the line again as he was up once he started getting that confident run going. He was up closer to the top of the crease, but now starting to slink back in a little bit. Well, and as a junior goalie myself, I mean, I can, I can vouch for all these goalies because it's hard. Once you lose your confidence, you tend to go back towards your net so you feel a little more safer. But that, as a goaltender, that's the worst thing you could do. Got to get out and cut down those angles. And what it's forcing him here, watch him go back and forth because he's basically taking a huge step. We see it there to his left, and that opens up the five hole way wide. Coming in Niagara again. Oh, off the post. Rebound. What a save <laughs> again. We're used to seeing that from backup goaltender Jay Priest on the Niagara bench. Durham just trying to keep this game in favor of the Turf Dogs. 9-9 the score. They were in control for the majority, but we're tied. Here's Durham now. McMahon's up top, wide open. Now he's cutting to the middle. Crease though. No call though, Croak definitely towed the line. Danko made the saves anyways. Goddard gets it, Dylan Goddard went low, well wide. Referee said that hit the netminder for a reset. I don't know if I agree. Well, John Watson, he's had a couple tough bounces now as both of these are on the wrong side. Oh, McMahon gets filled in from Mitch Dumont. And Mitch Dumont absolutely just took his turf there and sent McMahon to the ground. McMahon talking with Favero as he was the first guy he saw when he got up. And I think he wants number 10. What a pass from the netminder of Cole Murray. Connects. And on the goal, that is number 23, Pete Rennie. I believe. I was going to say every runner has a point, but none for Cody McMahon, John St. John. Joe Watson or Eric Schuel just yet. So there's and, the bomb, wow. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's what I said earlier. You get a pass like that, you gotta bury. You have no choice. That is beautiful from the goaltender. And Cole Murray, he's got, he's got two nominations in our top three now for play of the game. Yeah, I was gonna say, how is that not a moving pick from Jordan Helpy? as Nevin Sullivan went flying. And we'll take the officials' time out. So with 6.12 to go, 10-9 the score. We'll pause. Third quarter action in the fourth coming your way.
back inside the Meridian Center. Action back underway as they score once again. An outside blast quick off that TV timeout. Durham takes an 11-9 lead. So Danko with a quick back-to-back -back goals against him. And now Durham takes that two-goal lead with 6.04 left in the third. Well, we just talked about that with Cole Murray. This has been the knock on Danko kind of over the years is the tendency to give up this run. And it's going to result in a quick hook from Mike Atwood as Jay Priest goes to get the gear. I'm not supposed to have favorites up in the booth, but... Here comes one of my favorite guys over the years. You thought you saw spectacular saves from Cole Murray? Just wait and see the show that he puts on. Although, he's also been known to get a little testy if guys get in the crease, so watch that with some of these guys coming close to those lines here today too. Jay Priest, uh, pretty good goaltender. Brampton Inferno, Southwest Cyclops was on the retired list to start the year. Rights were traded to Niagara and now we see him in net. So with that goaltending change, this is maybe a spark that Niagara just wants to maybe settle Dankel down for a little bit. Well, and you can see Mike Atwood, he took Jay Priest's spot opening the door and he's got Danko right beside him. So just a little conversation. And uh, I, I don't know if we'll see him back in there. We'll see what Priest does coming in cold as Cole Murray way out of the net. And of course, Houtby goes after him and Mike Triolo doesn't like that. Not sure why he took that so aggressively is that was just a clean check on the net miner. Is yep. he still? Still wants Houtby. Yep. Houtby wants none of the big man. 6'8", six, 6'7". Six, now he slides off and goes for Joe Wasson. So here's Tainhouse. Looks to the crease. Tainhouse cutting in the middle. He gets it back, just couldn't squeeze it. And now it's Tim Edwards. I'm surprised there was no real Response from Niagara there after Triolo. Coyle, what a shot, but a better save from Cole Murray. Durham back the other way. This could be Jay Priest's first test. As here comes Goddard, better save from Jay Priest off the left shoulder. Stretch pass, connects, Caputo. Great defensive job done there. As the winner, as during the TV timeout, they had a flex cam here at the Meridian Center. The winner, the former well and warlord, Tom O'Malley, sitting beside Andy Tober, who's not in the lineup tonight. It's a good as choice. <laughs> Priest steps up and makes the helmet save off his face mask. As he's looking at the bench, wondering if he was coming out of the net there, maybe yeah. to pull the netminder. Yeah, probably the... Uh Probably, as we suspected, just the quick switch. But Danko's on the back step. He doesn't look like he's coming in anytime soon, but four minutes away from the quarter break. But what confuses me is Danko's still with the helmet on yeah. and all his equipment intact, so he's now looking. And I don't, I've never seen a change on the fly, but with Priest looking again, I'm beginning to wonder as Niger comes back the other way. They score! Newfeld, the exact same blast! What a shot. Oh, no, they want him to stay. Why not? Priest is plus one. Well, this confuses me, though, again, because Atwood said change. Danko said, no, no, keep him in there as Niagara just scored. So that's Danko's decision to keep Priest in the net. And now Danko has removed his helmet. Yeah, so it's definite here. It looked like Mike Atwood from where I saw it, wasn't calling him to come. It looked like he was telling him to stay. But yeah, you're right, it is a, a an interesting play down there because it looked like both goaltenders thought mm -hmm. the switch was coming. Well, here they come again. Priest the save off the side post as well. 11 to 10 the score, 3.30 to go in the third. With possession, it's Nevin Sullivan. Sullivan, number 25, goes across. There's a blast and they score. Priest didn't see it between his feet. They score five hole. Durham regains that two goal lead. And it'll be Patrick McRory from the outside. You can see Danko there. 
Manning the door, Jay Priest. He's another goaltender that plays a fair bit back in the net. Look how far back he is. Just takes a couple half steps. He likes to wander around in the crease before getting set. And then he does jump to the set position and just misses it to the left there a little bit. It's real tough to come in cold like that. And this is going to be even tougher. Well, Goddard tried to feed that through to number 11, Riley Campbell, but Triolo's there, and they get it up top. Farthing, the captain, who's been in the box once. He plays top. That pass intended for Dylan Goddard. Off the boards, and he's got it. Dylan Goddard tried to crease die, but oh. the ball wasn't even in his stick when he tried to make the attempt. Possession awarded to Durham. Getting a change. They send it to Shule, now to Goddard. Dylan Goddard. Back to Sullivan. John St. John also on the floor now. Durham fakes the shot. They have Farthing up top. They come to Shule. Priest is on his knees. That one stays in bounds. Possession now. Here's Matt. Oh, they get it. A quick east-west pass down low to John St. John. Two on the clock. Electing to try to get a shot off, which could have just put the ball down and get back on defense, but shot well wide. Another guy who had a great season this year with the Toronto Beaches to finish out his junior A career, John St. John. Bit of a journeyman uh, with KW and then back to uh, the Whippy Warriors, but uh, finished off strong, leading the Toronto Beaches with his veteran presence for head coach Glenn Clark. There's St. John in the two-on-one. Priest <laughs> threw his stick at him. <laughs> That, I've I never think, seen that before. Well, he, he does like to do that, the little poke check to try and go and uh, corral that loose ball. And I think he tried to do it and the stick just got away from him. But last time we saw him in a Sealax net, he uh, had the stick right up around the throat, I think, of Rob Blaisdell in the playoffs. Pre-game pre dust-up in their playoff match, but Corey Fowler back to work. Fifth point of the game now as he scores again to get Niagara one back here. Well, as Fowler jumps off, I take a look at the bench and I see number 22, Brandon Slade, was getting a little medical attention as he still has his head down on the bench. So we'll keep an update on him. Not sure what happened, but he seeks medical attention on the bench. Face-off violation, though. Durham gets possession. Ever since Priest has been in net, it's a one-goal game. 12-11 the score. Priest led in one. Danko so far 11. And we're still unsure if Danko will come in in the fourth. Here is Durham, looking like they're going to come down low with possession. They come to the near side for Nevin Sullivan. Sullivan back up top. Now they have it. Muir, the lone lock monster defending, and that's a low, well outside shot with no probability of going in with Priest there. But again, he was a little bit back. You're expecting that with about five on the shot clock to come right up high and, uh, and match that one, take the angle away, but he was way back on the line. 12 on the shot clock. We're under 60 seconds on the game clock. Very close affair as we see Caputo getting tied up with the Durham defender. Here comes the Turf Dogs. They're keeping Murray in the cage. There's a long shot, and like you said, now he's stepping out to make that angle safe. Yeah, now he's getting a bit more comfortable. Had to come in cold, no warm-up, didn't think he'd be playing. His gear was in the tunnel before he got the call, and uh, now he's got a couple shots on him. He's starting to feel it as Jay Priest. Robertson just dishes off. He's settling down the offense. 12 on the game clock, excuse me, 12 on the shot clock. Through to Caputo. Shots wide will go almost into the crowd as Tim Edwards couldn't get it. 10 on the game clock. Durham coming back. Edwards got a stick around the neck of number three, Mike Triolo, and that's drawing a penalty. Not what Niagara needed with only 5.5 left in the third quarter. Well, the Pfeiffer long pole midi using that one-handed cradle to come down the floor. And with that big wingspan for Triolo, it was a couple checks from Edwards. He was trying to get that stick on the wrap check. And five and a half here, it'll be a power play as just, I think the third attempt just rode high. And uh, it will be a power play here. Murray remains in the net though. 
Here we go, long blast. Ooh. Priest was almost out of the crease to make that save. So at the end of the third quarter, it's a one goal game. The Durham Turf Dogs 12 and the Niagara Lock Monsters 11. We'll be right back when we're sending things to the Barry Molson Center for some live coverage action. Back inside the Meridian Center. Some live coverage, extra action there on CLAX 240 at the Barry Molson Center. As we are set to go to bring you the fourth and final quarter and bring you home in today's Super Bowl matinee game here at the Meridian Center. 15 more minutes to play, and it's a one goal game. Durham will start this period on the power play as Tim Edwards is in the box on a slashing call. Niagara will run left to right. Durham, they're going right to left. Here comes Muir. Muir. Got it to Fowler. Back to Brooker Muir. Muir just killing off the 30 seconds in the power play. That Durham has. Still a minute and a half, and Edwards is minor. And that was a very long time it took to reset. The clock was down to 12 before they finally pumped it back to 30. So now, they're killing off quite a bit at time as individual effort will come to an end from Brooker Muir and his former teammate in St. Catharines, oh. Dustin Gatt had it. And pushing and shoving continues. Gatt getting in there with Mark Farthing. Also in there, Riley Campbell. And I believe Pete Rennie. Not much coming out of it. And I can't see Dustin Gatt going after a guy like Mark Farthing or Pete uh, Rennie. No. Two bigger guys. Farthing's dropped him before. I don't remember Rennie getting in a, into a dust-up like that, but Gatt can certainly throw. We've seen Farthing do it, mm -hmm. but he's not the regular guy. You'd expect more looking down the, the roster, Cody McMahon or, or one of the McCrory brothers. Well, now two Durham players getting in there, and there's Gatt throwing everything to try and get that loose ball. He's still going after it. A nice little soccer move there from the captain of Mark Farthing as Durham has possession, but Gad is not giving up. Dylan, excuse me, Dustin Gad, his brother Dylan, takes a shove from Pete Ren. As now, this power play is not going the way Durham wants. As <laughs> now, Rennie throws a punch at Dustin Gad. Now, Farthing got in the face of, I think, Fowler. 
and pardon me, Robertson and John Watson had enough. As he'll call the slash. And Farthing doesn't like that. He doesn't get upset much. Farthing doesn't find himself in the box too much either, but this is the second time today. Mm -hmm. Yep. The only one I can remember him really being that upset was a game he was playing for the Brampton Inferno at the Mattamy Center. It may have been the one where the bench is cleared and he got a game misconduct for contacting the goalie. That probably shouldn't have been. Well, with possession, it's a four on four opportunity for Niagara as Robertson got sent to the ground. It will be playing five on four lacrosse in favor of the Lock Monsters in five seconds. Rennie's got to be careful here right in front of the door. Finally figures it out with help from the bench. So Edwards is out of the penalty box as they're slow to get the door open. Edwards should have been out three or four seconds ago, but now he's on the floor. Five on four. Niagara has it. Here they come, three on one. With possession, it's Potter across. Edwards almost got that one oh. right out of the penalty box. Great play by McNulty, but then takes his man hard into the boards. I thought there may have been a call as we've got another big loose ball battle. These are starting to heat up as we get later into this game. Well, an individual Oof. effort there by Edwards to come out with that. There well, comes a delayed penalty as well. What happened in front of the net between McNulty and Tainhouse as now Tainhouse having words with McNulty. Triolo got in the middle of that. And we were watching the loose ball battle and all of a sudden Tainhouse was flat on his face. So McNulty goes for an illegal cross check Five on three for the Niagara Lock Monsters, and they're down by one. The fans clapping their hands and stomping their feet here at the Meridian, trying to get back in it. And penalty shot territory now for the Durham Turf Dogs as they got three on the floor. 47 seconds if they take another penalty, it'll be a penalty shot awarded to Niagara. Slade gets it back up top, quick stick. Down low to the crease. Better save by Murray to not cheat. Picked up by Slade. He's got Favero up top with Fowler. Back down low to Slade. Slade to Favero. They play catch. He's on the crease. Tried to go five hole. But he gets oh. sent to the ground. And that could have been your penalty shot penalty. But and they're not going to call it. And I think that's why the arms stayed down. If it was more egregious than that, they may have gone for it. Favero picked up that Lucy. Went to Fowler. Back up top to Slade, he's got room. Doesn't shoot, cross crease, Murray though, stepping to his right and robbed the cross crease. There's a shot, they score! Tainhouse quick to the crease though, and Shuo took exception and as he had a bit of a glare for Murray. Great job by the officials here to separate this one as the penalty box opened and Farthing was on his way into the fray. Favero shoved Shuo after that one, just to say how do you do? And the scoreboard now reads 12s across the board with 11.34 remaining in the fourth. Well, it was Shule that didn't like Tainhouse. If we've got this replay, guys, run it a little bit after the goal. Tainhouse is going to score here and then watch him continue. The bit of the look and the run through the crease, that's what Shule was upset about, which starts all this. It's just a quick straight, straight snipe by Tainhouse walking off the point there. But... Uh, it was the closeness to the goaltender that Shuo didn't like. Remember, he's got one scrap already in this game. So excellent work from our crew here. Our director, Alex Frazzo, and the replay operator today is Brody Spees. As here comes Niagara. One game's in the books already from the Barry Molson Center. Barry wins by 5-12-7, and that went in. The officials notice it, and they call it a goal. And Tainhouse this time points to the bench one of those guys that it takes the game to get a little dirty for him to start getting into the play reminiscent of former teammate Dylan Lord who was released at the beginning of the season but Tainhouse now starting to find it and this is why he's our player to watch the fact that he can just take over a game and that one bounces up and it eventually is the correct call it took a bit for it to get there but it is the go-ahead goal, 13-12 now in favor of the Lock Monsters. Well, if you're an Edmonton Oilers fan, you're not going to be happy. That the New York Islanders leading 6-1 to one from the Barclays, but Connor McDavid, the only goal for Edmonton. Gatnow to Muir. 
There's a blast. They try to keep this streak yeah, going. Yeah, guess who? Tane House. I can, uh, can't see why Atwood would put him right back on. Newfeld up over top. He oh. scores. What were you saying? Slam dunk competition? <laughs> How about four for Newfeld? And Andy Tober loves it in the stands. And that's why he's clapping his hands with the music. 14-12, <laughs> what a turn of events for the Niagara Lock Monsters. How about this? How do you do right over top of the big man, Cole Murray? Well, everybody's paying attention to Tainhouse. He's the hot hand. And Murray, on his way to the bench here, did... He, he just walked over himself. He's called the equipment manager. I think he wants the arm taped up, it looks like, but. Well, Masters is not dressed today. That's Lucas Coot on the left. So Coot is today's official backup, wearing number 41. And we've already seen one goaltending change as they get some tape worked on the goaltender, and he's good to go. But 14 now for the Niagara Lock Monsters. And it was 14, the magic number, at the General Motors Center three weeks ago, mm -hmm. where Durham won 14-13. Maybe unofficial timeout there for Cole Murray. I don't know, as he's watching Not Niagara really sure, come, yeah. come at him fast and furious. We got a jousting match between Shul and Caputo. They were chirping each other the whole time that was going on. Pardon me, it's Rennie, not Shul. Well, Nothing goalies more comes of that as of yet. Goalies can be unorthodox for sure, and they could take some different kind of quirks and different techniques to draw as much time as they want. You see a lot of water breaks sometimes occur when they're down a few goals, but now Niagara has a two-goal lead, and they're going to be called for going over and back possession. Yeah. There's that slow whistle we talked about earlier. It looked like Durham was maybe going to, or Niagara, pardon me, was going to get in there, but uh, a couple Durham players hustling to the ball. That's a good slow whistle play by Dale Set. So we're back in play. Favero, he's got a few tonight. Uses the seal for lead. Back to Brandon Slade. Back to Favero. Winds and fires. Murray's out of his net to cleanly make that save. Picked up by Jeff McNulty. Spinning away and just sliding that over to Pete Rennie. Rennie up the floor. Here's Riley Campbell. Usually hear the defense chant at the Niagara River Lions games, who play in the Canadian Basketball League here at the Meridian. But they need defense here today in the afternoon game in the Lock Monsters. That one over and back. Oh, if he would have picked that off, that would have been a breakaway <laughs> for the Lock Monsters. Yeah, and John Watson probably would have given him the fast whistle too. Quick restart. Nice job by McMahon noticing that and then not taking any more steps because it would have been the delay of game. Gap. Yeah. Coming on the floor. Now Niagara has it through Reed. They go back to the far side, but now it's Muir. Muir down low. Reed really opening up some shooting lanes up top in the middle. Newfeld to Brooker. Muir who loves to shoot. That's a clean bounce shot and a better save from Cole Murray. Murray, excuse, Murray. I'm making two players into one there on different Want one teams. one more? Or are you no, good? that's okay. <laughs> I'm impressed that I got those two together and set it cleanly. Free stands tall, makes the save. Niagara coming back the other way. He hasn't had to do much in the last few minutes, says Jay Priest, but that's just someone doing him a favor, shooting it right in the logo almost. Well, if you're just joining us, Danko started today's game and made his second straight start for Niagara. He's been a part of every single game, Danko, so far. As Doug Buckin who played the first two for Niagara and then was released, mm -hmm. split time with Connor Danko. And now Danko started, then he got pulled today. As Robertson takes a shove on the crease, and that's not going to ensue to much more. As Robertson, the smaller lock monster, <laughs> will get back on defense. And again, as we said before, Triolo, who used to open space for Jordy Robertson. Those two mixing it up. Well, Steve Triolo's in the building. Or Triolo, excuse me. The Buffalo Bandit, who had a 12-10 victory last night at the first Niagara, nope. and they call a crease violation as a wrist shot formation. Yeah, you can you can reach into the crease if you want to drag the ball out, uh, but you can't bat it into the, the net. Obviously, you don't want sticks swinging in the direction of the goaltender. That's why that one's called back. 
18 on the shot clock. We still have seven and a half to go here in the fourth quarter. Lots of time, only a two goal game. Slade, down low, Favero tried to feed that to Fowler in the middle. Edwards has it, Tim Edwards. Nifty pass to Fowler who battles for it on the far wall. He's battling Ryan McCrory, he's got it. Fowler just lobs it all the way up and they're gonna slow down, full 25 on the clock. Favero wants it on the far wall. They're still looking to feed it to him and they do. He's got lots of time and space. Favero. Cross they go. There's a low bouncer. And for the fourth consecutive time, they tried to go low bounce shot on Murray, but he's made the save each time. Been given a lot of goalie love out here today. How about Angus Dinley, the reigning MVP, his first victory of the season. Up in Barry earlier on. One big game still to happen today, and I'm sure you all know what that is as Priest makes the save. Skate Canada final? <laughs> yeah. TSN 38 has that coverage. <laughs> Uzbekistan webcast feed. <laughs> nice. As now picked up by Durham. They have it on the low, but Priest, unorthodox. Look at him come right out of yep, the net. Yep. And that is the Jay Priest I know. There it is. Not pretty, but gets the job done. And how about Connor Danko? He had the full, almost headlock on Newfeld, dragging him back so they didn't go. They didn't go too many. Well, here comes Durham one on one. Brooker Muir is chasing. He's got to get around Reed. Zach Reed. Brothers, of course, with Nate Reed. As we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, he was a coach of the Oakville Buzz, who had a fantastic Junior B season last year. Almost scared Aquasasni in the wet Eastern Conference Finals. But Aquasasni too strong, went on to oh. win, and they oh. go right over top of Priest. Yeah, well, there's a scouting report for you. Mike Triola, newcomer to the league, but not a newcomer to some of the stats. As Cole Murray now takes another walk in the direction of the bench, just has a conversation with the coach. Not sure what for, but... Let's Watch take this a look. here from Triolo. Oh, I thought, yeah, I thought he went to challenge Priest there as he came out, but looks like he's just using his reach and size again. Is Triolo getting on top? And whatever Murray said to the bench, Lucas Cute getting the helmet on. So maybe he's not 100% in the net, is Cole Murray. As Lucas Cute looks like he's getting ready to come in here. Well, there's five and a half remaining, and it's hard enough for a backup goalie to come in, but when you're down by one, it's even harder. They're going to look to the bench, and we'll see if Lucas Coot makes his way in. He's got his helmet getting prepared. And that makes a bit more sense. Like, if he's not feeling well or something, that makes that, that wrap timeout a little, a little bit more, uh, makes a little bit more sense. There's a shot off the back wall and we're going to get a TV timeout so this is what we're going to need for the goaltenders we'll figure it all out, we'll take you home five, in, five minutes, nine seconds remaining in the fourth, stay with us
4.50 remaining in the fourth quarter. Brooker Muir just rolls it to the bench. He has number 16, Corey Fowler. Favero couldn't handle it, and now comes the Durham Turf Dogs back the other way, three on three. Favero's the chaser. Triolo just trying to spin away behind the back pass. Couple of bounces connects to the corner. They're setting up on offense. Update on the net mining situation for Durham. It is still number 41, 44 rather, Cole Murray. Murray showed signs as if he was either sick or injured and needed to go off, and Coot got ready. Well, we've seen that over the years. Jake Henhock in the Creators' Cup Championship a couple years ago, and Connor Danko a few years ago back at the Seymour Hanna complex, actually physically ill, had to call timeout during that game. Brooker Muir for the Lock Monsters, who are playing their second season here at the Meridian Center. As that one went off the right shoulder of Murray, and he threw his hands in the air <laughs> there. As I'm not confused what's going on with Cole Murray right now, but... We'll try to figure that out for you. 3.38 to play in the fourth quarter. Spencer Tangway alongside Matt Carrick and the rest of our broadcast team here on CLAX 1. That pass just couldn't connect. And the shot clock will expire. Niagara takes over on possession. Jordan Robinson, Robertson is there. Just trying to battle Thomas Hogarth and Robertson, a little feisty for the size he is. Yeah, he's another one of those spark plug players, and he was that way coming up through the Beaches organization. One of the things that The Rock liked about him and why he's here with the Durham Turf Dogs today. Well, Coyle's in after it as that pass was intended for the crease, but it went to the corner, and now the shot by Potter gets turned aside. I think I said Turf Dogs. Obviously, I meant Lock Monsters. I think so. Jordan Robertson. But we will announce today's three stars selected by you, the fans. And the fans here at the Meridian Center, you tweeted them in at JVI Video and at CLAX Lacrosse League. We thank you for your tweets. And we'll get to those after today's game. We'll finish up with some stats, some highlights, and we'll take you home to get you ready to turn on your barbecues, pizza ovens, whatever you're doing for the big game tonight between the Denver Broncos and the Carolina Panthers, not the Buffalo Bills, unfortunately. Favero the shot, no one knows where it is, but it's actually on the back of Patrick McRory's stick. Well, he's a face-off guy, he's used to that. McR wow, a one-handed John Grant <laughs> Jr. style pass, leads for a breakaway for Newfeld. he tried to go back over the top, but it's off the shoulder, and they get a reset. That might have been the most unsuccessful John Grant Jr. style goal pass well, I've ever I think, seen. I think the 10 count was around eight, eight and a half there, so he was just trying to clear center, and Newfeld just got the foot on it. Favero settling it down. He goes up top across to the far side for Brooker. Muir, he finds it, fires. Oh, they almost had a rebound effort, but he couldn't get a stick on it was Mitch Dumont. Man, Dumont's getting some chances here today. Well, it looks like Murray's going to remain in the net for the remainder of this game unless overtime is needed. Well, Coots still got the bucket on. He put the do-rag and the bucket on. And, I mean, he stood there with both arms out of the padding and stripped of almost all the gear opening the door. So, Reed, flip pass to Tane House. Back to Zach Reed. Here comes Niagara now. One minute remaining in today's game. They get a shot, no reset, but now they're gonna get a reset as there is a confusion on the floor. There's two. So with 51.9 to go, timeout, Durham, right here on the JVI Sports Network, we're gonna Take you home in just a second. Last chance to tweet him in. Three stars of the game at JVI Video right here at the Meridian Center. Last chance to tweet those in. First, second, and third star. So many great choices to choose from here at the Meridian Center today. But right now, in a 14 to 13 game, wouldn't it be something? 
and if the course, score ended 14-13, but for the opposite team. And of course, our play of the game still to come. 14-13 was the last second goal earlier on. We've seen some tight games lately in Sealax, of course. Oh. Past two Creators Cup championships going to overtime. <coughs> One of them involving the Niagara Lock Monsters as it was Kevin Sullivan, the hero on that day. Taking the feed from Andrew Potter. 51.9 to go here in the fourth quarter. There's been so many great games Matt and I have worked together. We've had a press box that almost had to get breaking into by the <laughs> St. Catharines Fire Department. We're not in a press box today, but kind of a riser oh. that some of us have almost fallen off of. Life-threatening situation. It has been bad here at the Meridian Center, but to bring what a you great venue. Lacrosse action. 44 to go. Durham, what a save Ooh. by Priest. Come on, you can't write this any better. The backup goaltender, and they still got, well, 23 plus to work with. Niagara. Mir got that to read. They're screaming for a timeout, and they get it just in time before. Oh, it was Jay Priest that called the timeout. Nobody on the bench was signaling it. The ball was up at mid-floor, and Danko, the first one to sprint off the bench and hug the veteran goaltender. Oh, what a play from Jay Priest. So timeout, Niagara, That 24. could be the best play of the game, and it's not even, yeah. a, it's not even a play. <laughs> That's more of a skill mindful thinking move from Jay Priest, who could probably outrun any of these players. Oh. He's in the best shape, loves to be that hybrid style goaltender to sprawl across and make saves like we just saw 20 seconds ago. Yeah, a member of the Orangeville Titans, or Oakville Titans, pardon me, Senior B, uh, former coach of the Mississauga Tomahawks Junior A program. I understand he's up in Barrie now, if I'm not mistaken with that organization coaching in the summertime. Here's our play of the game, and we went back and forth a while. There's the pass. Oh, it's gonna be the save from Coot, uh, pardon me, from Murray. Left but that save, save just got challenged at the other end of the floor <laughs> by Jay Priest. I still like that goal from McNulty. I thought that's the one we were gonna show. We went back and forth. So with 26.3 to go, the score is 14 for Niagara, 13 for Durham. And if you're thinking deja vu for the scoreboard, well, you're pretty close. Exact same score so far. The last time these two teams met, but with an empty net for Durham, and Niagara has the ball at half, Niagara also has that one goal lead this time. They're going to try the half-court press here. And it, it's not going to work. Zach Reed, the... Bigger, stronger body. Trying to find it. Reed, crease dive, but he doesn't put it in anyways. So this writes the final chapter. 14 seconds left on the game clock. Here comes Durham. The net is empty with possessions. Dylan Goddard. Goddard, lob pass too high off the side wall. There's an underhand shot that went right to the moon. No touch. Possession is going to go to Niagara. 2.8 to go, Niagara gets possession, and that pretty much will do it. Dumont has the ball. Oh, he tried to throw oh, it out. Yeah. They get a shot, they score! No, no. Will it count? The referee is not signal. Oh. They say no right away, actually. Wow, what a, what a heartbreak that would have been. The referee, John Watson, said no goal. That's a good call. Well, that is the correct call in my mind from up here, but my God. Goodness, <laughs> I made it close. 14-13, your final score once again. This time it's from the Meridian Center. So these two teams, if they were to meet in the playoff series, what a series it would be. And if you couldn't believe it, the fifth place seed, Lock Monsters, defeat the top seed, Durham Turf Dogs. Final score, 14-13. Still to come, we got to get to our three stars of the game as the teams finish shaking hands. And that, that finishes the season series between these two teams. So if they end up tied, their head to head and road and away is, is all knotted even. So now we got to get into the math here. 
as this week does signal the halfway mark of the CLAC season. So as the teams head off, the final score once again is 14-13, but watch this right here. They scored, but as Jay Priest steps out of his net, he didn't hear the home, but the horn sounded at the Meridian Center. Yeah, we'll confirm that, and there, there's green lights and red lights and stuff that go on. We won't get into that. Uh, not actually in use because not every building obviously has those here in Sealax, but if we saw that replay again, I don't even think we saw the light, but the green light was on when that shot went. Well, but, let's uh, take a 14, look 13. Sorry, go ahead. at today's three stars. Tonight's third star of the game, and it's the Durham Turf Dog, number 71, Jeff McNulty. Yeah, McNulty finishes the afternoon with, as we pull it up here, sorry, two goals and four assists in two penalty minutes. As we said, missing a ton of their regular offensive weapons they were going to call on him, and they gave him a big way six points this afternoon. Well, our second star of today's game, and it's coming also, Thomas Hogarth, our player to watch from the Durham Turf Dogs. Patrick with an extra assist thrown in for good measure and definitely fantastic on the defensive side of the ball. A little bit feisty in there as well, which we also like to see. And the number one star, and this one is coming from the winning team, Ryan Neufeld. Yeah, four goals on the day for Neufeld, added an assist. And again, another one of those defensive players that stepped up on that side. They really came to play. Then we saw the run from Tainhouse. We saw the run at the end from Niagara, and it starts with the defensive play. And of course, that goaltender changed Jay Priest and the timeout. Well, know, we'll take play from those guys. We'll take the I out of his name and put the U back in the W. The score 14-13 for the Niagara Lock Monsters. This has been a Canadian Lacrosse League JBI Sports Network broadcast. On behalf of Spencer Tangway, Matt Carrick, and the rest of our crew. We thank you for joining us here at the Meridian Center. Let's send it to San Fran. Hope you enjoy tonight's Super Bowl. Thanks for joining us here in St. Catharines.